Welcome back. All right, so uh, happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, we are one month away from the start of the season. One month from today, we will be watching two hockey games to start out the NHL's regular season. And for the St. Louis Blues, when they take to the ice, it looks like Tarasenko is going to be there. Tarasenko, of course, there was a trade request. And Craig Berube, when interviewed, has stated uh, he he figures Tarasenko staying there. And he says, yeah, there was a trade request. But uh, basically, the expectation is that he'll, he'll be a professional about this and commit to training camp and play. And uh, I think that's the expectation as well with Eichel and Buffalo, too. Uh, and and this is this is where it's going to get interesting too. Of course, for Tarasenko, the difference is there isn't an injury that would keep him out of the game. This is just him wanting to be traded. Uh, hopefully, Tarasenko and the Blues can work it out uh, so that he comes in and he plays and he plays well. So that if he still wants to get traded, St. Louis can get a maximum return on it, and everybody ends up happy, right? Also, yesterday they announced the uh, Winter Classic. Uh, jerseys and showed them and they're basically this but in the white version so this is the winter classic from from a few years back uh which is a nice jersey and the the, the winter classic they showed uh it's a it looks like it's that off-white cream color um minnesota's used that a few times other teams have used that as well so i i think it's fine um i have ordered both the minnesota and st louis winter classics and when they arrive, I'll do an unboxing. We'll go through it then. Um, it, I mean, it, it, it looks fine. Uh, it's, it's a pretty safe bet. Like if, if you're, if you're St. Louis and you're hosting one of these things, going back to your original look for a Winter Classic is, is a nice safe bet. It's going to sell a lot of jerseys, and uh, it's going to make fans happy. For people who aren't Blues fans, I think there's more likely to be a reaction of meh, but. Uh, again, I, I like the look of it, but until you've seen some of them in person, like this is one of those ones that until I saw it in person, I was kind of on the fence with. And then when I saw it, I was like, okay, that's that's a fantastic jersey. So we'll see. We'll see how well they sell. Um, the Minnesota ones seem to sell very quickly. So it's a completely different uh, look that Minnesota went with for theirs. Uh, Evan Soiler's news of sorts. Uh, Ken Holland saying that he has talked to Alex Chason's agent over the last week. Also, uh, Tyler Ennis, who is a UFA, he's no longer an Evan Oiler, but he's still skating with the former Oilers. Now, that's not necessarily a sign that he's going back to the Oilers, but would anybody really be that surprised if Ennis signed another contract with the Oilers? And what is what it, what would signing Chase on and Ennis, what would that do to the overall depth chart? What does that do for a guy like Tyler Benson that's looking to break in? Or does Benson end up pushing one of these guys out, right? So we'll see. We'll see if Ennis uh, gets a taker as we get closer to the season. Uh, there are plenty of guys out there right now as unrestricted or restricted free agents who we'll see get signed to contracts between now and a month from now. So be fun to talk about that when that takes place. But again, we're in that, that quiet time right before training camp. Uh, now, development, rookie camps for some teams are already uh, well and underway. And so we're seeing a lot of interviews with the younger kids about how they're, you know, what, what role are they going to play? One thing that I've learned uh, with this channel, and I mean, it's something I always kind of knew, but with this channel, I've seen the excitement that fans have for the young players, your first, your second year, even guys going to their third year. It seems to be well beyond the excitement they have for other players on the team. And uh, the the optimism for rookies is always... It's always interesting to me because when we look at rookie classes, we look back like 10 years later and go, well, there were some good players in there. There were some misses and some guys who were okay. And then there were a few guys who were really great. But before a rookie has taken that first shift in the NHL, they're all great. They're really, it, and I, I find it interesting, and again, with the channel, I've seen that, that almost all rookies, it's just, watch out for this guy. He's going to be great at the NHL level. It's going to be awesome. And that that enthusiasm and excitement is just, and it's it's for most most prospects. Uh, so it, it's interesting. And then, of course, a couple of years later, some of those prospects, you'll see some of the those same fans going, ah, the guy sucks. Hey, he's not very good. And it's it's interesting. So I've I've thought about doing a video on um, 
on on draft picks that that got all the hype and it just it just never really panned out. Uh, I thought about doing a video on that uh, between now and the start of the season, so we'll see if I get around to that or not. Uh, odds are I probably do, but we'll see. Uh, so there you go. Uh, just a quick little news video for you on your Sunday, uh, September twelfth, one month out. Let me know your thoughts regarding the World World or Winter Classic jerseys. The the one thing that I find kind of odd is that the St. Louis Blues went with this nice stylized 1967-68 throwback and Minnesota's got this completely different out there throwback to like an early 1900s type design. I don't know how they're going to look on the ace together. That should be interesting. But let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.